Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have an insurance company has an obligation to pay the medical costs for a claimant. The cost of annual claims today are $3,000 and medical inflation is 6% per year. The claimant is expected to live for 10 more years. Claim payments are made at yearly intervals with the first payment to be made one year from today. Find the present value of the obligation if the annual effective interest rate is 5%. Okay, so we know we're working with a geometric annuity in this case because the insurance company has an obligation to pay these payments of $3,000 annually and every year it's going to increase by 6%, right? These costs are $3,000 and the inflation is 6% per year. So when you have a payment that is changing by a certain percent or a certain rate every payment period, you know you're going to be working with a geometric annuity. Those payments might be increasing or they might be decreasing. In this case, it's increasing by 6%, but either way, it would still be a geometric annuity. And so then we have a four-step process down here that we can follow to calculate either the present value or the future value of a geometric annuity. And so our first step here is going to be to value each payment at the valuation date. And so first we need to figure out, are we looking for a present value or are we looking for a future value? Because that's going to change how we value these payments. Well, this problem makes that pretty easy because the last sentence tells us to find the present value of the obligation. And so then if we start with our first step here, we can at least write down that we are looking for the present value, right? That is what we want to find. But before we go through with valuing each payment at the valuation date, which is step one, let's write down everything that we know from this problem. And so the first thing that the problem tells us is that we have these annual claims that are being made of $3,000, or at least the first one is $3,000, and it's going to increase by 6% each year. And so we know that our initial payment X is equal to 3,000. And then we're told that the inflation rate is 6%, and so that is the percent at which this payment is going to increase each year. And so that means that R, our inflation rate, is equal to 0.06. And then we're told that the claimant is expected to live for 10 more years. And so at first that might seem a little irrelevant, like why, why do we care how long the claimant is going to live? But what this tells us is that the insurance company is only obligated to make these payments while that claimant is still alive, right? They're not going to continue to pay medical costs after that person has passed away because they don't have any medical costs anymore because they're gone. Seems a little morbid to be talking about that, but that is the scenario we are working with here. And so what that means is that there's only going to be 10 more years worth of payments that the insurance company is obligated to pay. And so we can say that N or the number of payments will be equal to 10. And then we're told that these payments are made at yearly intervals, which we already knew because these are annual claims. And that first payment is to be made one year from today. And that's going to be important when we get to step one here, when we value each payment at the valuation date. But before we do that, there's one more thing we have to take a note of, and that is that the annual effective interest rate is 5%. And so that means that I is equal to 0.05. Okay, so now we have everything written down that we know from this problem. That's going to make calculating this annuity a lot easier. And so we can start with our first step here, which is to value each payment at the valuation date. And so remember that when we are calculating the present value, we are looking for the value of these payments at time equals zero, the value today. And so if the first payment is to be made one year from today, that means our first payment of $3,000 is one year out and so we need to multiply it by the present value factor. And so we'd have times V. But also notice that our problem tells us that the annual claims today are $3,000, right? So you would think that the first payment would be $3,000. However, the first payment is to be made one year from today, which means in one year, this $3,000 is going to be 6% greater. And so actually what we're going to want to do is to first multiply this by one plus the inflation rate of 0.06 and then multiply by the present value factor just to make this look a little bit nicer. All right, and then we'll move on to our next payment, which will be $3,000 times 1.06 squared, right? Because now it's going to increase by another 6%, so we have to square that term. And then this second payment would be made at year two, and so we need to bring that back two years or multiply by the present value factor squared. Right, this is what it means to value each payment at the valuation date. We want to take each payment and evaluate it at time equals zero, which is where the present value is valued, right? The valuation date is time equals zero, so we need to bring these payments back to time equals zero. All right, and so then we could continue to add these payments all the way up until the final payment, right? We would have our third payment, then our fourth payment, 
But let's skip ahead. Let's just add all the way up to our final payment, which would be 3,000 times 1.06 to the power of 10 times the present value factor to the power of 10, right? Because we're going to have 10 of these payments. And if our first one had 1.06 to the first power and the present value factor to the first power, and they're increasing by a power of one each time, then our last payment would have each of those to the 10th power. And so now we have completed step one of our four step process. And so now we can move into step two, which is going to be to factor out the first term. And so in this case, we're going to be factoring out 3000 times 1.06 times the present value factor from each of these terms, right? This is going to be in every single term in this series of payments. And so for step two, we will have that the present value is equal to 3000 times 1.06 times the present value factor times, and if we pull all of this out of our first term, we're just gonna be left with one. And then if we pull it out of this term, we will have plus 1.06 times the present value factor. And then if we go to our last term, we're gonna be pulling out one of these 1.06s and one of these present value factors. And so we're going to have 1.06 to the power of nine times the present value factor to the power of nine, and then we'll close that quantity, right? So we pulled 3,000 out of all of these terms, so there's no more 3,000s in here, it's on the outside, and we pulled out one quantity of 1.06 and one present value factor from each of our terms. And so now we are done with the second step of our four step process, and so now we can move into step three, which is going to be to rewrite the remaining factor, which is this right here, as a sum or a geometric series. And so this can be rewritten as a geometric series. It always will if you follow this four step process correctly. And so for step three, we will have that the present value is equal to 3000 times 1.06 times the present value factor times the sum from K equals zero to nine of 1.06 times the present value factor to the power of K. Right, this series of terms right here is just 1.06 times V to the power of zero, which would be one, and then the power of one, and then all the way up through to the power of nine. So we start at zero, we go to nine, and we have those two values to the power of K. All right, and so now we've completed step three of our four step process. We have rewritten this factor, this remaining factor, as a geometric series that we now can sum because we know what the sum of a geometric series is. We know that if we have a sum from k equals zero to some value n of some value a to the power of k, that is equal to one minus a to the power of n plus one divided by one minus a, right? And so in this case for our sum here, a is equal to 1.06 times the present value factor, right? That is what we have to the power of k in our sum here. And so we can use this summation formula to calculate the present value of this geometric annuity. And so if we erase this formula, we can move on to step four, which is to compute the present value. And so we'll have that the present value is equal to 3000 times 1.06 times the present value factor times the sum of this series. And so this will be multiplied by one minus 1.06 times V to the power of N plus one. And in this case, N is nine. And so we're gonna have nine plus one. And so this will be to the power of 10. And then in denominator, we will have one minus 1.06 times the present value factor. Okay, and so then if we clean up our work here, we can calculate this by rewriting what our present value factor is equal to. And remember that a present value factor V to the power of N is equal to one divided by one plus the interest rate to the power of n. And so in this case, if it's just to the first power, it's just one divided by one plus the interest rate. And so if we rewrite this, we'll have that this is equal to 3000 times 1.06 divided by one plus the interest rate. It'll be 1.05, right? Because our interest rate I is 0.05, it is 5%. And so if we have V to the power of one, we just have one divided by one plus the interest rate, 1.05. And so we can just multiply one divided by 1.05 by 1.06 to have this quantity. And so then we'll have this multiplied by one minus 1.06 divided by 1.05 to the power of 10, and then one minus 1.06 divided by 1.05, right? So we just rewrote each of these present value factors and multiplied them by 1.06 to get these two quantities over here. And so if you plug all of this in your calculator, you will find that the answer is equal to $31,617 
and 19 cents. That is the final answer to this problem. We have found the present value of the geometric annuity in this problem, or more specifically, the present value of the obligation that this insurance company needs to pay. All right, let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have Nick wants to make deposits into an account with a 4% annual interest rate. His first payment is $1,000 and he decreases the payment amount by 2% every year thereafter. If he makes these deposits for 15 years at the end of each year, what is the future value after 15 years? All right, so we have another geometric annuity here, except this time the payments are of 1,000 and Nick is going to be decreasing the amount of that payment by 2% every year, right? So since the amount of the payment is changing by a certain percent every year, we have a geometric annuity that we can calculate. And now I don't have our four step process down here for us to reference because you're going to want to try and remember those steps when you do a problem like this. And so before we go through that process, let's first write down everything we know from this problem. We know that the first payment is going to be $1,000. And so we know that X is equal to 1,000. And we're also told that he makes deposits into an account with a 4% annual interest rate. So that means that I is equal to 0.04. And then we just wanna make sure that the payments are being made at the same frequency that the interest rate is compounded for, right? This is an annual rate. And it looks like he's going to be making these payments yearly because it says he makes these deposits for 15 years at the end of each year. Okay, so that means we're not going to have to convert our interest rate because it's already matching up with the payment cycle. But we did mention that he makes these deposits for 15 years. And so that means that N will be equal to 15. And if we go back up here, we have that he decreases the payment amount by 2% every year after that first payment. And so the inflation rate R is equal to negative 0.02. All right, and so then we have everything written down that we're going to need to solve this geometric annuity. And so now we just have to ask ourselves, are we looking for a present value or a future value? And thankfully our problem tells us outright that we want to know the future value after 15 years. And so for step one, we're going to want to evaluate our payments at year 15 or the future value at year 15. And so what will this be equal to? Well, we have a first initial payment of $1,000 and that's going to be accumulated up until that 15th year. Now be careful, you might be tempted to multiply this by 1.04 to the 15th power, but this would actually be incorrect because notice what is happening here. He's making these deposits for 15 years at the end of each year. And so what that means is that this first payment is being made technically one year from where we started, right? This is being made at the end of the first payment period or at the end of the first year. And so there's only 14 more years that this is going to generate interest for until we hit year 15. And so we're only going to be accumulating this for 14 periods or 14 years. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. But then our next payment, we're going to have plus 1,000. But then before we multiply it by 1.04 to the 13th power, because this is going to be made at the end of year one, so there's 13 more years that we need to be accumulated for. Before we do that, we need to decrease this payment by 2%. We need to use this inflation rate. And so what we'll be multiplying by is one plus negative 0.02 but that would just be one minus 0 0.02. So what we're really multiplying by here is 0 0.98, right? Nick is going to be depositing 0.98 of $1,000, 2% less than he paid last time. Okay, and so then we'll multiply that by 1.04 to the 13th power to accumulate this or to evaluate this at year 15. All right, and so then we'll skip the next few payments and we'll go right to the last payment, which is going to be $1,000 times 0 0.98 to the power of 14, right? And then we don't need to multiply by an accumulation factor because this last payment is made at the end of the 14th period, which would be the beginning of year 15. And so we don't need to accumulate this amount anymore. The future value is going to be calculated the moment that this payment is made. All right, and so that means that this $1,000 would be multiplied by 0 0.98 to the 14th power, because if you notice, we didn't have it in our first payment, but every payment afterward, it's going to increase by a factor of 0 0.98, right? So the next payment after this one would have been 1,000 times 0 0.98 to the second power and so on. And so since it was to the first power for the second payment, it would have been to the second power for the third payment and so on, which means that it would have been to the 14th power for our 15th payment. All right, and so now we've completed step one. We have evaluated all of our payments at the valuation date. We can now move on to step two, 
which is going to be to factor out the first term out of each of our terms. And so if we do that, we'll have that the future value is equal to 1,000 times 1.04 to the power of 14 times 1, right? If we pull 1,000 times 1.04 to the 14th out of this first term, we're going to be left with 1. And then how about our next few terms, right? How are we going to do that? How are you going to pull 1.04 to the 14th power out of 1.04 to the 13th power? We'll notice that if we were to have two quantities, let's say x to the power of 14, and we're multiplying that by x to the power of negative 1, this could also be rewritten as x to the power of 14 divided by x to the power of 1. In either case, both of these expressions are equal to x to the 13th power, right? Because when you multiply two variables of the same base, you add their exponents, and so you'd have 14 plus negative 1, which would be 13. And so if you keep this in mind and look at what is happening over here, if we're going to pull out 1.04 to the 14th power from 1.04 to the 13th power, we're going to be left with 1.04 to the negative first power, right? So hopefully that makes sense because we're going to be pulling that 1.014 out of this quantity, and that's going to leave us with a quantity of 1.04 to the negative first power. We are pulling 14 out of here, and that's going to leave us with negative 1. And so what we'll have is 0.98 times 1.04 to the negative first power. And then if we go to our last term, we'll have 0.98 to the power of 14 times 1.04 to the power of negative 14, right? So since there were zero 1.04 quantities over here, if we're pulling 14 out, then we're going to have negative 14 left. All right, and so then we can actually rewrite this to be a little nicer by just moving these quantities with negative exponents to the denominator so that they have a positive exponent. And so we'll have that the future value is equal to 1,000 times 1.04 to the 14th power times 1 plus 0.98 divided by 1.04 plus, and then all the way up to our last term, 0.98 to the power of 14 divided by 1.04 to the power of 14. All right, and so if we clean up our work here, we can move on to our next step, which would be step three, and we're going to rewrite this remaining factor as a geometric series. And so if we do that, we're going to have that the future value is equal to 1,000 times 1.04 to the 14th power times the sum from k equals zero to 14 of 0 0.98 divided by 1.04 to the power of k. Right, so in our first term, we had this quantity to the zero power, which would make it equal to one. And then we have these two terms to the first power right here. And then all the way over to our last term where it is to the 14th power, where both of these quantities were raised to the 14th power, right? So this geometric series represents this remaining factor here. And so now we can move on to step four, which is going to be to calculate the future value here by writing the sum of this series. And so the future value will be equal to 1,000 times 1.04 to the power of 14 times, and then we have the sum of 1 minus 0 0.98 divided by 1.04 to the power of n plus 1, where n is equal to 14. So we're going to have 14 plus 1, which is 15. And we divide by 1 minus 0 0.98 divided by 1.04. All right, and so then if we plug all of this into our calculator, we have 1,000 times this quantity and then times this expression, we will find that the future value is equal to $17,706.24. That is the final answer to this problem or the future value of the geometric annuity in this scenario. All right, and so with that, this was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.